Welcome as we gather on this Remembrance Sunday. My name is Steve Haskett, I'm the Vicar of St John's Church and we are here at St John's in the military memorial chapel that commemorates so much of Blackpool's military history and commemorates so many of those who have served in our armed forces, both in times of war and in times of peace. And it commemorates so many of those who have paid the ultimate sacrifice in those conflicts. And as we gather today in these really unusual circumstances, where we're not able to be in the place where we would normally gather to commemorate these things, it seems that this is a very fitting place to stop and to remember. And so we meet today in the presence of God and we commit ourselves as we do so to work in penitence and faith for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may together live in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. And so before we continue, we stop to remember our own part in the brokenness and the hurt and the pain of this world. And so let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all people. Almighty and merciful God, Lord of men and nations, we confess with shame the sins, both private and public, by which we have broken your law and grieved your Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy. We acknowledge the reproach that war has brought upon the name of Christ, we confess our lack of love for you and for our fellow men. Christ, have mercy. And teach us, Lord, we pray, to forgive as we are forgiven, so that we may grow more like him and live our lives according to your will. Lord, have mercy. And so may Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them who with heartfelt repentance and true faith turn to him. Have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sin. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And so let us remember before God all who have died as a result of war, oppression and tyranny. They shall grow not old as we who are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning we will remember them. We will remember them.
When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. And so let us pray. Heavenly Father, we bring before you on this day the needs of your world. And as we do so, we think first of all of those many places in our world today ravaged by war and conflict. We pray that you would, in those places, raise up men and women of peace who would strive to bring those conflicts to an end. We pray, Lord, for reconciliation, for healing, for understanding, and for compassion. And Lord, we know that it is often the most vulnerable who are most affected in these places. And so we pray for those who've been left widowed and orphaned, those who've been left without home and food, those who've been left fleeing in fear. We pray today for their protection, for their safety, and that, Lord, days of peace would come to them. Lord, we pray, those, uh, we pray for those who bear the scars of war and conflict. For those many veterans here in this United Kingdom, throughout the Commonwealth and across the world, who are left with wounds of trauma or physical disability. We pray for them giving thanks for their service and their sacrifice. And we pray that their needs would be met. We give thanks especially and pray your blessing on those many organizations, including the Royal British Legion who work to support people in those circumstances. And at this time, we pray for our own government here in the United Kingdom and the governments of the nations of Europe as they think on and deal with the many complex issues that face us all together. We pray, Lord, for mutual understanding and a coming together for the common good so that never again would this continent of Europe see the horrors of the past repeated. And so, Lord, let us give thanks for the example of courage and fortitude given to us by men and women who have endured war. Let us remember those on active service and let us pray for all people who suffer, especially those who, having survived conflict, still bear its marks in mind or body, and for all who have been bereaved through war. Amen. Remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to be ready to do whatever is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate, and always to be gentle toward everyone. At one time we were too foolish, 
disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God, our Saviour, appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Saviour, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. As we think back over some of the things we have commemorated in recent years, such as the 100th anniversary of the armistice, or the 80th anniversary of the Battle of Britain this year, or the 75th anniversary of the Normandy landings, and the hardships faced by so many ordinary people in this country during those great conflicts, we think of the defining characteristic of those generations, sacrifice. That characteristic is powerfully captured in the moving words of the Kohima epitaph that we heard earlier. When you go home, tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow, we gave our today. Today, our own generation is being called upon to live through another moment of sacrifice, a moment of laying aside the entitlements and privilege that so many have become used to, a moment of coming together for what St. Paul described as the common good. It was St. Paul who wrote the words read to us in the reading today. That reading is the New Testament reading set for Armistice Day. And St. Paul was a man who led the church through great difficulty under a political superpower that was hostile towards it. But Paul himself was also a citizen of that great political power, the Roman Empire. And he knew that the duty and calling of every Christian was to submit as far as their conscience would allow to the governments and authorities that ruled over them. Elsewhere, he encouraged Christians to pray for all those in authority. Paul was not advocating blind submission to oppressive and unjust regimes. He himself was ultimately executed for not doing so. Paul is reminding the Christian believers that he's writing to that the way to live peaceful and quiet lives is to follow those laws and rules that are put in place for the common good. With the hindsight of history, we also know that order and the rule of law are fundamental to maintaining peace within and between nations and avoiding the kinds of conflicts that we remember today. But following those laws, set in place for the common good in moments of international crisis, such as the one we are living through now, is equally important as we seek to think beyond ourselves and prioritise the health and well-being of the most vulnerable in our communities. Ultimately, this requires recapturing that spirit of sacrifice that so defined past generations. There has been plenty of talk this year about a new blitz spirit in the UK. At the end of that reading we heard, Paul reminds the believers of what Jesus had done for them. Paul reminds them that through Jesus giving of himself on the cross, that sacrificial act of self-giving, they have received mercy and new life. The ability to think beyond themselves to the needs of others. And so in these days we look to the past and we see the sacrifices of those who have gone before us. And we look to the cross and we see the sacrifice of Jesus. As we look to the cross, we can receive hope and encouragement that the hope and the joy of the resurrection always follow the pain and sacrifice of the cross. 
It is the great Christian hope and promise that better days are ahead. Amen. And so we pray the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And so may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon each one of you and remain with you today and always. Amen. Thank you.